Good evening. Today is Tuesday, January 14th. This is the school committee meeting as of this date on s at 7 p.m. Uh, call to order, please. Or call, excuse me. Mr. Andrew Murch. Present. Ms. Martina Shea. Present. Ms. Jacqueline Ryan. Present. Mr. Spiro Tomo. Present. Mr. William Bishop. Present. Dr. Raymond Page. Excused. We will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We will now move on to public input. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to address the Southbridge School Committee? Please state your name and address when you come to the microphone. Kathy Lapriori, 51 Mark Avenue. I personally miss the um, having the student rep sitting up here like we have in the past. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that, but um, it was nice to have some input on what was going on at the high school, and I think that in the past that student took it seriously and was here to help us out with happenings at the school. I think it was a good thing for the student and for the school to have this. I also want to say that I back Chairperson Ryan and her comments and Councilor Thomo's comments at the last meeting about the receiver. I think it's time to put on the big boy pants and be here. I, I think that's part of the job and I, I'm just real upset about that, but whatever. Um, I hope that in June, whoever is elected actually shows up for these meetings. If you take the position, you should be serious about it and be here. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Champagne, do you have an um, sure. up, update about the student rep and why the student rep's not um, coming I to these meetings? I don't, but I can ask that question and get back to you about you know, who the student rep is and why they're not here. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairperson, uh, someone was, we were told that someone was appointed, correct? Yes, we were, and I'm, I'm surprised. We January, I mean. I am surprised. I can't even remember someone's been Yeah, I have never seen the student rep here. This uh, year? No, not this year. Mm. And we were told there was someone appointed to the position, so I'm a little confused as to why they're not here, because I agree with Ms. Lapriori. The input is valuable, and it's important to the community and this committee, I, mm -hmm. I would say to have their input here. So if you, if you can follow up, that'd be wonderful. I will. Yep. Mr. Merch? Um, yeah, I, I, I actually agree with Ms. Lapriori and, and you as well. One of the things that I've been, when I go out to the community and I speak with them and I always set up these events, um, I always say I want to hear from students because there are front lines. Mm -hmm. You know, parents have a different perspective. Uh, teachers have a different perspective and staff have a different perspective, but the kids are the ones that benefit or don't. So to hear from them is, is vital to progressing the district. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lapperary, for your comments. Is there anyone else here tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next agenda item, the discussion of minutes. Are there any changes, additions, attractions, anything? Seeing none, we'll move on to Agenda item number five, new business, receiver and superintendent's announcements. Ms. Champagne. Good evening. We have several items to share tonight from the Southbridge Public Schools. Um, the school department budget development is in process and the first quarterly report of 2020 will be coming up for the, um, on our website and for the uh, school committee. The district has posted anticipated vacancies for the 2020 to 2021 school year. Um, and in March, letters of reasonable assurance will be sent out to staff members 
In the past, the anticipated vacancies weren't posted until June based on retirements and other factors. Um, but last year in 2019, the district posted those anticipated openings a little bit earlier um, in the hopes that that would help with teacher retention. And it seems to have served that purpose in this past year, although we'll um, you, find out at me, the end of the year. Excuse into the mic, it's hard to hear you. Um, so those anticipated vacancies will be posted or, ha or have been posted rather. Um, Southbridge Middle School has launched a new model of a student support center on campus, which has already seen a great deal of engagement and success. The student support center serves the purpose of redirecting disruptive student behavior, supporting teachers in the classroom, and improving culture and climate at the middle school. It's staffed by a school engagement officer and the school adjustment counselors. There's at least two staff there at, each, at every time, at all times. Um, students are referred to the center for at least two class periods when they have disruptive behavior or need special attention. Um, they work on academic assignments while at the center and are guided through um, behavioral expectations. Um, there is a rubric of behavior, expected behavior and expected academic um, tasks that they have to work through in order to get out of the student support center. Um, and so that they're taken out of the classroom and not disruptive to their peers. Um, and so far, that's only been present for a short amount of time, but so far it's had some success in addressing the needs of students with behavior that may be disruptive to the teachers or their peers. So far, the model has served to address the impact of disruptive behavior and has addressed culture and climate, which was one of our key priority areas in improving um, the system in Southbridge is culture and climate of the learning environment. <clears throat> Staff and teachers at all the schools are always working hard to serve the students of Southbridge and to provide them with a challenging and appropriate education. Recent gains include a decrease by 44% in skipping classes at the middle school between November and January. Also between November and December, average referrals by day per day at the high school, we're down by 29%. Referrals are any general category of um, disciplinary um, category. <clears throat> Students in science classes at Southridge High School recently had an opportunity to learn first aid and CPR. We're happy to report that all of the students who have taken the certification test so far have passed and have become first aid certified. Thank you to science coordinator Donna Zanelli and Harrington Healthcare Education Department representative John Gorman for making this happen. <clears throat> Congratulations to Southridge High School senior Charles Lopez, who was honored earlier this month at the Worcester County Superintendents Association annual scholars luncheon at Holy Cross College. This award is given to students who demonstrate academic excellence and exemplify civic engagement in their communities. Charles is senior class president, captain of the football team, and involved in various school clubs and activities. He's enrolled in AP activities, AP classes rather, and was awarded the John and, Adam, John and Abigail Adams Scholarship. Um, and he also took part in the recent uh, effort by local students and community members to repaint facilities at McMahon Field to show pioneer pride in advance of the 100th football game. The EOS Foundation recently recognized Southridge Academy for at least 80% participation in school breakfast. The EOS Foundation works to encourage participation in school initiatives that are shown to improve academic and social emotional outcomes for children in, or students in underserved communities. It was a positive reflection of the work being done at Southridge Academy to be recognized in this way. The Young Gentlemen's Club at Charlton Street School recently expanded to also serve sixth grade students at Southbridge Middle School. This program helps a group of young men develop, develop into leaders among their peers and teaches character development. The program has been successfully run by Charlton Street Dean of Students Valenti Tulloch and was featured by a major news outlet last year. Mr. Tulloch has been able to expand the program to sixth grade to help stabilize the transition to middle school for these students after they leave Charlton Street School. 
along with the Student Support Center at the school, at the middle school. These initiatives help support the improvement of culture and climate at Southbridge Middle School and beyond. <clears throat> Southbridge schools also recently received a letter from Southbridge, New Zealand. For those who are not familiar, the town in New Zealand is the only other Southbridge in the world, and the two towns have exchanged communications in the past. This letter came specifically from the principal of the secondary school in, New in Southbridge, New Zealand. That school is celebrating its 150th anniversary this year and sent a letter as part of their celebrations. Plans are underway to return the favor with a letter from Southbridge Public Schools. <clears throat> Finally, this year's prom closet has begun to plan for the 2020 prom season. This is the program that for several years has had uh, several, has a successful fundraising and, um, and dress collection effort to provide our high school seniors and juniors with a less expensive option for prom. And um, there are a lot of beautiful dresses that are there and uh, accessories. And so if anybody's interested in donating used dresses or gently used dresses, they can drop them off at Colab or the library, Jacob Edwards Library. And so that concludes my presentation. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Ms. Champagne. Are there yes. any questions? Mr. Merch. Uh, thank you. Um, do we have an update on West Street and where we're at with the repairs due to the water damage? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have information about West Street and the repairs to the section of the school that was flooded about a month ago. Uh, but I can find out some information about that and get back to you. Please and thank you. Yep. I appreciate it. Any other members have questions? Mr. Bishop? Yes, I, I noticed you mentioned one of our students is a John and Abigail Adams scholar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, refer back to what the young woman who spoke earlier about things in the past where we used to have a student rep. Uh, the John and Abigail Adams scholars uh, are, are in that award and are recognized as a result of MCAS testing. I won't get into the thresholds that are required for that. But annually, since, since the beginning of MCAS testing back in the early mid-90s, we always recognized the John and Abigail Adams scholars. They would come to the school committee with their parents, and to, so the community could be appreciative of the efforts of these young people. Our school committee uh, would love to do such a thing, but unfortunately, our uh, hands are tied, and we seem to have a school department that wants to operate in a vacuum. You know, when they took over our district several years ago, we were promised a world-class educational system. I remember it like it was yesterday on the stage down at Charlton Street School. The then commissioner who's passed away and his new receiver, Dr. Heisiger, came, stood there and told us we were going to have a world-class education system. It's hard to create a world-class anything in a vacuum. And that's exactly, and I don't mean to get upset with you, young lady. I'm just stating the fact that those young people earned a John and Abigail Adams scholarship. They represented our district above and beyond what most students do, and they should be publicly recognized. The town of Southwood spends $32 million on our public schools, and these students should be recognized mm -hmm. adequately. Does anybody here know who or how many John and Abigail Adams scholars? Does anybody on TV? Does anybody in this room? There were 12 um, John and Adams scholarship award winners this year. Mm -hmm. um, and we released a press release okay. to local media. Um, so 12 of our, I'm not sure if it's just seniors or if it's juniors and seniors, but 12 of our students at Southbridge High School were honored with that award this year. Well, it certainly would be nice if they came forward and were recognized by the committee. Although we don't have any direct responsibility, they certainly would get the recognition and kudos on TV that they deserve. Thank you. I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. I fully agree. I think it would be nice to have these kids here and have them be recognized fully in public. They do a lot of hard work, and it's nice to have these positive stories come out of our community. And it would be nice to showcase them here for everyone to see. So I agree with you, Mr. Bishop. If I may add, uh, last night at the, town at the town council meeting, they recognized the cheerleading squad. Cheerleading squad was here. Actually did a little routine. It was cute. Um, and, and they got the recognition for their fourth place finish. So I, I actually agree with my colleagues, I think, to have them here and to, to present them to the public on television. 
so that in passing, either at the Big Bunny or at the library, that the community can congratulate them personally. I think that would actually be that positive message that I have been pushing since I've sat here. I think that's exactly what we need to see in this forum. So I agree. I think they need to, sh to come here and we need to be able to publicly recognize them. Sure. I can I definitely also pass like on to that. See that. When they're doing something like this at the school, we would be at least notified if not invited. Mm -hmm. What's up? I said I would like us to be, the school committee, to be notified when they are having an award ceremony mm -hmm. of this nature um, so that either we could attend or at least we would be aware of it. Mm -hmm. I can pass that feedback on, definitely. Thank you, Ms. Champagne. Um, I also just want to say um, I'm happy to see the Young Gentlemen's Clubs expanding. I've seen a lot of school districts um, implement this club to great effect. I think it provides a great source of um, a great example for these kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to see that it's not only doing well, but it's expanding. So I want to thank the district for their efforts and the, and the advisor for the, her, their, his efforts mm -hmm. to um, show these students a good example. Um, any other comments? With that, we will move on to chairperson's announcements. I only have one. Um, Mr. Uh, Michael Montigny has resigned effective January 7th, 2020 at 9 a.m. from the Southbridge School Committee. Um, he will be moving out of town, and I wish him nothing but the best, and I thank him for his uh, months of service he had on this committee. And we will now move on to member forum. I believe I started on this side last time, so I'll start over here. It was the other way. It was the other way? Yeah. It was. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop. We'll start over here then. Okay. Uh, could you come back to me, please? Of course. Put some thoughts together. Okay. Then we'll, we'll start over here again. All right. Um, first off, everybody happy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm one for a dad joke, so happy hindsight. It's 2020. So um, I hope everybody enjoyed their holiday season. Um, and we, unfortunately, uh, I also want to extend my thoughts and prayers to those in Australia and those in Puerto Rico who are going through a very, very rough time. And I do have... Uh, I do have friends here in Southbridge that have family in Puerto Rico that have been affected, and a lot of members of the community have family um, in Puerto Rico, so um, our thoughts, my thoughts and prayers are with them. Um, the, it, I, will, I will say it is a little bit disappointing not to hear an update on West Street's, um, the West Street school situation. Um, they don't have it. The kids don't have, um, my son does not, can't go to the art class that was down there. Um, they've moved, since moved his class. He still has art class, but it was a throw to his routine and he made mention of it. This is something that the kids notice. And given that the school is an older school and we, I, I would love to, to hear a month to month update, even if it is just we're demoing the old stuff and that's where we're at. Um, updates would definitely be good and reassuring to the parents because we are still worried. This already happened once this year. It's going to get colder, um, and, and, and personally, my son goes to that school. I'm scared that, that there, something may lead further on down the line. I'm a mechanic by nature, so when one thing breaks, it might not for an older vehicle. It's not that long before something else starts to break, and buildings are no different. So um, a month-to-month -month update would be great. Um, so that is a little bit disappointing that, I, that we didn't get an update this morning. Um, I want to finish up um, commending with the statistics you just gave us. Um, from the receiver's report that um, combined with the gentlemen's club being extended to the middle school, I think this is a step in the right direction that we needed to hear as far as the climate and culture and the community needed to know. Um, given the fact that kids are attending class, 40, down 44% for skipping class, one of the biggest things we have, problems we have in Southbridge, and I think that the dais can agree, attendance has been a problem for almost ever. So the fact that we have 44% Less kids skipping class means they are in class. Um, and that, that's exactly what we need to get. Whatever progress we're making curricula-wise, it's not going to be, it, they're not going to receive it if they don't show up. So that's good to see that we have kids coming to class. Um, lastly, uh, I'm going to, we have, it's, M Mr. Montigny resigned, um, made it well known before he resigned for about a month that he was moving out of, out of town. Um, he didn't attend the last two meetings 
and waited a month after he already knew he was moving to announce his resignation. To the previous comment from the citizen input, I do agree. If you're elected or appointed to a position, you show up. If you don't show up for work and you have a job, you get fired. We don't have that authority here or that luxury. It's a town committee, it's an elected position or an appointed position. But I think if you are elected or appointed, you need to be here. And there's another member on this dais that I just actually went through my notes, has been to two school committee meetings since I was sat in June. And that was the joint town council school committee meeting to appoint Mr. Montigny and last month where, and this, this gentleman's Mr. Page, where Mr. Page made a comment that if the receiver's not going to arrive, which again, he is absent tonight, that we should just cancel the meetings. Um, I wasn't given an opportunity to comment there after that. So we, multiple people on the dais have the same complaint, that we need to have community involvement from the school district, that they need to be here, that they need to say stuff, that, they're, that they need to answer questions and answer to criticisms properly. I don't disagree with that. What I do disagree with is calling for the cancellation of the only public forum that we have. That's disheartening. And given the fact that Dr. Page has had years of great service to this community on this committee, I spent most of my December watching school committee meetings all the way back to 2015. And Mr. Page was a very vocal, or Dr. Page, excuse me, was a very vocal advocate for the students of this district. And he's He's given years of great service. So it was very disappointing to hear that from Mr. Page, or Dr. Page, and it's very disappointing to not see him here again tonight. And this might be a little bit, this might cast me a little bit of flack, but this is my personal opinion. If you're not going to show up to these committee meetings and you don't believe in this committee meetings, you should resign your position so we can have somebody else fill that seat that actually wants to be here. I know Dr. Page wants to be here and wants to be involved. He wouldn't have dedicated years of service to this district if he hadn't. But if you're not going to attend, resign so we can put somebody else in that seat. And when, if it's a scheduling issue, because I don't think it's personal, he's an educator still. So if it's a scheduling issue, wait till things settle down and come back. I would love to see Dr. Page back here and, and, and helping out this district and bettering and helping to better the lives of our students. But. He's not going to be here. I, I'm, I'm going to call on Dr. Page to resign his position. I understand he's up for re-election this year, but um, I, I really wish that he would do this committee honor, and if he's not going to arrive, let us put somebody in that seat that wants to be here. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Shea, do you have any comments? Once again, not only is the receiver not here, but the business manager is not here. You know my one issue is always the budget. Um, I ask the town council to have a meeting where we can have at least a budget report of a fulsome nature, not just charts, graphs with arrows and pretty pictures. We need the numbers. Uh, if we're in trouble, we need to know it. If we're not, if we're doing fine, then we need to know it. But we don't know, the town council doesn't know, and we won't know until, I guess, June. Uh, we still haven't gotten a report on last year's budget. Uh, we need these numbers. I know we, are, we do not control the budget. Technically, the town council does, so I am asking them to step up to the plate and get the numbers and evaluate it. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Um, Mr. Thelma, any comments? Mr. Bishop? Thank you. Less than two weeks from now, we'll be, in our, uh, we'll be going into our fifth year of receivership. Okay, it was four years ago. January 26th, uh, 2016, when the vote took place in Boston and Kate Roxbury, I happened to be there for it. Uh, the night before, we had a uh, extended, not extended, people didn't get a chance. We, people were allowed three minutes to speak to the Board of Education up on the stage at the old high school. And the next following day, it was, it was kind of a foregone conclusion that the state felt they could do a better job running our schools. It's the third district they've done, they had done so. Uh, I don't think uh, the, the other two are in any better shape. I just noticed that uh, 
The receiver in Holyoke, after five years, is leaving at the end of the year. Uh, they re-up Lawrence for an extended period of time, and I understand he just re-upped us. But as I said, it's been four years, and I'm going to borrow a phrase from a politician of many years ago. Are the students of Southbridge any better off now than they were four years ago? I have my opinion. Anybody who really knows what's going on in our schools could answer that. And uh, I don't see us getting any better under, the, under this format. I just don't see it happening, but that's my personal opinion. But we all have to ask ourselves, we don't know. I've asked for the last three or four meetings, could we have a long, you know, a, a look at the MCAS scores for the last five years? That's what, that's what the barometer they used and the justification they used to take over this district. Anybody sitting here that thinks those are better scores than they were four years ago hasn't really looked at them. When are they going to get better? I don't see it happening with, with the format we're using right now. You know, you're isolating the community from our schools, which is sad. So I will leave it right with there. Are we better off now than we were four years ago? It's all what you think. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any? Um, Mr. March. I did forget. I, I do apologize. Um, tomorrow, um, I will, the, our, by my, our receiver's advisory board meeting um, will be tomorrow. Um, so I'll be able, we'll be able to meet with the receiver in that collective body. Um, we are discussing the budget and reviewing the quarterly report. Prior to that, um, I will be taking a tour of Southbridge Public Schools with the receiver and the receiver's advisory board. So that way I can have first-hand accounts of what's going on in the classroom. And also, I've just scheduled a community roundtable discussion for Wednesday, January 29th at Holy Trinity on Hamilton Street. Um, and I do look forward to parents, fellow committee members, students uh, to attend this meeting. It's just an open forum to talk about what's going on in Southbridge Public Schools. Um, that way I have an opportunity to answer any questions I have information to answer. Um, and we can just have an open, constructive discussion. Um, that was all. Thank you. Any further? Comments? I, I'm just, what yes, meeting? Sir. Receiver's advisory board. So the. And we know about this where? Um, the, so the receiver uh, got with members of the community, um, which uh, the, the head of the Southbridge Business Partnership, uh, Town Council Chairman Jack Jovan. Um, we have a few parents on the committee as well, and we have a student on the board. So it's a collective body of community members to give, to have open and constructive discussion about Southbridge Public Schools, and it gives them a forum to ask questions. This was created by the receiver. Um, I was asked to be a member of that board, and I gladly accepted. Our first meeting we held, I believe it was in November, and it was pretty constructive. Uh, I had a lot of discussion. Um, I think I made mention about the student's perspective um, from there, um, which again, I think we can all agree student input is extremely important. Well, I do, but I just think the whole thing sounds a little secretive. Uh, I, it's, a little, it's a little offensive, to be honest with you. And, and, and I'm not going to get into it on camera this no, evening, no. Well, I mean, but I'd certainly like to discuss it with you at the conclusion of this evening's meeting. Thank you. Were, were all of us notified? What time is this meeting tomorrow? It's at the, it's at the I'd have to check my calendar. I believe it's at noon. Could you do that? Yes. Would you get back to me in, mm. before I'll the I'll have meeting? an answer for you before we leave tonight. Excellent. I will state that it was past practice um, under a former receiver that it was an appointment of the chair to that board. So, and again, I wasn't, I wasn't even consulted about this. So I, it's, it's... That was it, my question. It was. It was under, I remember under Heisinga, we had... Um, no, 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 it no, wasn't... Were you notified regarding what the school board nope. members talking? No, I wasn't even informed about this. I don't recall getting anything on the email. Um, it sounds know. like a little club to me, so. Hey, it's it's certainly, certainly not what government is about, from my standpoint. Okay? Government is open to the people, and I'm frankly uh, quite offended to learn of this secretive happening as an elected official. Well, like I said, also on this board, Town Council, Jack jo Town Council Chair Jack Jovan's on this, on this board as well. So it's, it's a collective of community members, not just elected officials. 
these are mostly members of the community that have a vested interest in Southbridge Public Schools and have questions. And I understand the frustration. I don't disagree with it at all. But I uh, <coughs> preluded to it in the last meeting that it was for a guy that doesn't have to show up here that the way we were conducting ourselves in this forum could be construed as one-sided and against the school district. Not that that's fact, but perception is different than what's actual fact. It's up to us to kind of clarify that. The guy doesn't want to show up, so he wants, but he wants community input. And I'm going to be honest, Ms. Kathy Lapriori was the first person to stand up here in the citizens' input section uh, forum for the first time since I've sat. That's the first person to ever say anything. I understand we need community input, but the community is not coming to input. This is at least a group of people who aren't well to do within the government, except for town council chair Jack Jovan and myself. <coughs> These are people, just people in the community that can ask, that have asked questions, got answers, and they pressed him on his issues too. And I, if you have questions on what happened, I have more, I've got notes, and I'm more than willing to review them well, with you, but I, I don't think that it's deceptive. It's trying to get what he wants, which is a community input in, in a forum, which unfortunately he was not getting here because no one attends these meetings. They watch them on TV, except Ms. Kathy Lapriori this evening. That's it. That's the honest truth. We can't get community input if the community's not inputting. This was an avenue for him to do it. I don't blame him for it. I'm rolling with the punches at this point because I'm trying to do anything that I can to help better the Southbridge Public Schools. This was an avenue I could use. So I took, it, I took the opportunity. Mr. Chair, yeah, I, through you, your implication that the people sitting here don't have the best desire for the Southbridge Public Schools is offensive to me after working 32 years in that district and putting in six days a week most of those years. Anybody who knows my work ethic in this district and my desire to see this district move forward would find that not very truthful. I didn't okay. mean it to okay. come out That's like exactly that. That's exactly how I'm taking it. And I apologize. Guys, we will not have arguing on the dais. Please wait till we be recognized, okay? Are you finished, Mr. Bishop? I am. Thank okay. you. Mr. March. Mr. Bishop, I've only been in Southbridge for nine years. I've heard your name for nine years when it comes to education. So I apologize greatly for offending you because that was not my intention. You've dedicated your life to this district and these students. I, you can't take that kind of experience or product. There are students that have come back to this district to work underneath you as, stu as teachers and staff that have gone on to better things as well. You have given the community a rock solid foundation as an administrator and as an educator. I did not mean for that to come off that way and I, I greatly apologize. You have, you've dedicated your life to this district and, and I, I'm really, really sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I really did not. I, um, if, um, if I may, real quick. Um, I think the crux of the issue, it sounds at hand, was notification, at least to the members of this board, about the meeting, about the formation of it. Again, in the past, under past receivers, this board has been notified and it's been left to the receiver and the chair to figure out appointments, etc. members of the board. And again, I think the frustration is what it sounds like here is, again, not being given information about these things as elected officials that represent the Southbridge Public School District. So, Ms. Champagne, in the, um, if I may, in the future, can you please pass on to Dr. Villar that we get notified about all, any type of community event, including the superintendent roundtable meetings? Yes, yeah, I'll pass that along. Thank you. Are there any other comments under member form? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there second. a second? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Meeting is adjourned.